In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use Flyway with Spring Boot. Because let's face it, if you're using a database in production and you're not managing the database schema, time is ticking because it's going to go horribly wrong. That is unless you choose to use something like database migrations. So let me show you how to use Flyway. So when your application's domain changes, maybe you have a new variable in one of your classes, the database needs to be updated as well. So you'll need to put a new column on that table. Of course, you can manage this manually by logging into your database and running your SQL scripts, but that's pretty error prone. To make life easier for you, Spring Boot does offer the schema.sql and the data.sql files that you can put in your source main resources to create your schema and populate it with data, but this approach does have its limitations. A much better way is to use nice testable database migrations. And of course, we're gonna use Flyaway for that, so let me show you how to do it. So first things first, you're gonna to wanna to go to start.spring.io, and this is going to generate for us a Spring Boot project. So let's take a look. We don't wanna use Gradle and Groovy for this one. We're going to be using Maven, and we're going to be using Java. We're going to select the general release version 3.1.3 at the time of recording. The group will call that com dev tiro and the artifacts will call this one flyway. Demo project for Spring Boot and flyway. Great, we're going to select the packaging of a jar file and we're gonna use Java 17. Now for dependencies. The dependencies we're going to need for this one is Spring Data JPA. We're going to be using a real PostgreSQL database for this one. So let's get the PostgreSQL driver. Of course, we're going to need Flyway. So let's not forget that. And finally, I'm just going to add Lombok to the mix because we're going to be creating some data classes and that will make things simpler for us. So let's generate this and open it up in our IDE. So here we are in IntelliJ. But before we start, we are going to need a database and we're going to use Postgres for this one. And we're going to start it up using Docker. So I'm going to create for us here a file which is called docker-compose.yaml. And I'll now populate this with what we need to run a Postgres SQL database. This is about as simple as it gets. So this Docker Compose file is going to create for us a container, a Postgres container running on the usual ports. And the Postgres password is going to be change Marine prod with an exclamation mark. And we're going to connect to this using our application. So first things first, let's start this up. Open up a terminal and I'm going to type docker hyphen compose and up. You can run this with the dash D flag if you want to do it in the background, but we're just going to have it here so we can see it. The database system is ready to accept connections. Now, the next thing we're going to do is connect to this in a way that I can show you it visually. So we're going to use dbeaver for that. So here we are in dbeaver. We're going to go up to the top left here. We're going to select for ourselves the PostgreSQL database. It's running on localhost. And uh, we'll type in the password here of change me in prod exclamation mark. Let's test the connection. Connected, looking good, let's click on finish. So we now have a connection to our database. Let's just make sure we have what we expect. Empty tables, looking good. So now we can actually start on our application. So here we are back in IntelliJ and we're going to do the absolute bare minimum here to connect to the database and see our application fail because none of the tables exist. And at that point, we'll use Flyaway to create them. So we're going to need some domain objects for this one. So let's go source main Java and we'll create for ourselves here a package and we'll call this one domain. Now, if you've watched any of my content, you know I love books. So we are going to create for ourselves a domain object, which is simply going to model a book. So we'll create a book class in domain and we're going to use the Lombach annotations at data at all our constructor and no ours constructor and builder, why not? And if you want any more information on what these annotations actually mean in more detail, we do have a full Lombok course, so do check that one out. But the TLDR is that this is going to create all of the getters, setters, uh, equals and hash code, all of the boilerplate stuff that we want in addition to creating the constructors for all of the arguments, none of the arguments. And hey, if we want to use a builder pattern a little bit later on, we have the option for that as well. So what does a book do? Um, well, a book is going to have an ISBN, which is a string and its unique identifier. And it's going to have a title, which uh, it's just going to be a string. So this gives us a plain old Java object or a POJO. We're now going to turn this into a Spring Data JPA entity. And the way we're going to do that is with the at entity annotation. And why not? We're going to put the at table annotation on there as well and specify the name of the table that we want this to represent, which we're going to call books. Let's import that. 
And every entity must have a unique identifier. So we're going to put at ID on the ISBN there. And that's looking fine to me. So this is going to be a very simple table that we would want in our database with the ISBN and the title for the time being, both of them going to be represented by, let's call it text. But just this class existing by itself isn't going to be enough. So I'm going to create for ourselves in here a package called repositories. And we're going to create a new interface in here. And we're going to call this one book repository. Now this is going to allow us to interact with the database. For more information on repositories, we have a full Spring Boot course that you can check out. We'll put a link in the description below. Now this is going to extend the CRUD repository. And then we need to say the type this deals with, in this case going to be book. And it's going to be string as the second uh, argument in the generics. And that's going to be the type of the ID, which is ISBN, that's a string. Okay, so we now have a CRUD repository, so that enables us to have create, read, update, and delete functionality. We're also going to put the at repository annotation on the top here to mark this as a repository and to allow us to dependency inject that where it needs to go. So let's go over to our application here, Spring Boot application. So we're going to turn this into a command line application. So we're going to say implements command line runner. And then we're going to implement the run here. Now we're going to need access to our book repository. So we're going to say private final book repository. Let's call that book repository. Seems like a good enough name to me. And this will need to be injected and we're going to constructor injection for this. So if we just specify a constructor on this class, that'll be enough to inject our book repository into it when our application starts up. Now we're simply going to say book repository and we're going to say find all to get all of the books in the database. It's not really going to matter that there's no books in the database for the time being, but because of the way that Spring Auto configures, this is going to put everything in place to allow me to show you the application starting up, connecting to a database, and then ultimately failing. So we're going to find all, not find all by ID, and we're simply going to go for each, taking the book, and now we're just going to go system.out.println and we're going to say book dot to string just like that and that will just print out the book for us so now that we have the bare minimum of an application which has some spring data jpa entities in there and is actually using them in some way in this case just printing out all of the books in the database we have enough that spring is going to go ahead and do everything that it needs to do to allow me to show you flyway so next step is to actually get this connected to our database and we're going to do that by going into our resources over here and open up application.properties now, let me populate this with all of the details that it needs to know in order to connect to Postgres. So here we go, quick run through. So this is the URL that we can find our database on, localhost on the usual ports, forward slash Postgres. Our username for this is going to be Postgres, and we already know that our password is change me in prod because that was in our Docker compose file from earlier. We're going to be using the Postgres driver to connect to a Postgres database, no surprise there. So the only thing that's really worth mentioning is this last one. The implementation of Spring Data JPA that Spring Boot uses has this concept of auto DDL. So uh, it's able to create the database schema for you based on the entities that it finds. Now, of course, we don't want that to take place. We want to use Flyway instead because with Flyway, we can manage the database migrations over time. But with auto DDL, it runs a risk of doing things like deleting the entire database or updating when it's not supposed to. Now, this is only if it's misconfigured, mind you, but obviously if we can reduce risk, we reduce risk. So with the value of none, this is completely disabled. We're only going to be using Flyway here. So I'm now going to go ahead and start up my application, bearing in mind we expect this to connect to the database, but ultimately fail because none of the tables exist. Let's give it a go. Okay, we have a failed application, so let's just check it's failing for the reasons that we expect it to, and not just because I misconfigured something. So if we take a look up here, right to the top of this stack trace, we will see that we failed to execute the command line runner, and uh, it tried to execute some SQL, but hey, books does not exist. Of course it doesn't exist, it's a completely blank database. And we can double check that by going over to dbeaver, and we'll just refresh this. So we do have one table, but we don't have the books table. So more on what the flyaway scheme history means 
in a moment. So let's get back to our application. So now here comes the good bit. We can now use Flyaway to create the schema in our database. So if we take a look at our source main resources here, we can see we've already got this directory called db.migration. So the Spring Initializer was kind enough to create this for us, and this is exactly where we're going to put our Flyaway database migrations. So we'll go in here and we're going to create ourselves a new file. Now Flyaway has a very particular file naming convention, but it is pretty straightforward. So it goes like this. We have the version, which is usually V. Uh, in this case, it's the first one in the list. So we're going to say V1. And now you need to put a double underscore. And I'll say again, it's a double underscore. And the reason being that if it's a single underscore, you don't have yourselves a Flyaway database migration. It's not going to be picked up and it's not going to be run. And of course, we want it to be run. So we're going to go double underscore. And now we can put a description. So for this one, I'm just going to say it's uh, initializing the schema. So initializing the schema, we're going to use underscores as delimiters here. And it's a SQL file, so dot SQL. And behold, our first flyaway database migration, a empty SQL file. So what are we going to do in here? Well, let's populate this with all of the SQL that it needs in order to create this books table for us. So here we are. It's creating a table, it's called books. It's going to have an ISBN column, which is text, and that can't be null because that is the primary key. And we have another column, which is title. Again, that's text. So bearing in mind that dBeaver is showing that we have no tables, let's see if it creates this for us. So we're going to start our application up by clicking this play button here. Okay, so it looks like it started up and it's exited with Exacode zero, so it was a success. So let's go over to dBeaver, see if this actually was a success and see if it's created for us our books table. So here we are, let's click on F5 for refreshing. And there we go, we have ourselves a books table. So there's our ISBN and there's our title. Get a little diagram, there we go. Go. So that's about the most basic example of how to use Flyway. Now it's time we talk about that Flyway schema history table. So let's take a look. So if we look in the Flyway schema history table here, we can see that it has a single entry. And this single entry has the installed rank one, the version of one, and its description is initializing schema. Hello, we recognize that from earlier. And uh, we've got things like the script in here, a checksum, and uh, installed by, installed on, so on, so forth. So this Flyaway schema history is a table in your database that Flyaway uses in order to keep track of database migrations. And if one of the database migrations was to change, for example, if you were to change a database migration one when you had two in play, then uh, yeah, Flyaway would pick up on that and it would fail, it would tell you about it. So. In order to demonstrate that, we're going to need a second database migration. So let me show you how to do that. So we can see here we've got V1. Well, naturally, what comes after V1? We're going to have V2. So we're going to say V2, and we're going to say add a column to books. Let's call it category. So add category to books dot SQL. Great, and I'll just put the SQL in here to add that column. And there we go. So we're going to alter the table books and we're going to add the category column, which is just going to be text, like a category of book, like fiction, nonfiction maybe. Books have categories. So that is all well and good now. Let's rename this, put a double underscore, not a single underscore in there. And now if we run our application, we're expecting for the books table to have the category column on there and uh, also for that table to have another entry in there for v2. Let's see if it works. Okay, we've got Xcode 0, so that was a success, apparently. Let's double check it. Okay, so here we are. Let's refresh. And let's refresh over here. Okay, looking good. So first things first, let's check books. And there's our category column looking good. And let's check that flyaway scheme history. And we can see here, we've got the installed rank. We've got a number two now, add category to book. There's the script. There's a checksum, installed by, installed on. Looking good. And really that's just how Flyaway works. You would just add another database migration to change the database to be how you want it to be. You can run this on your local, test it all out, get it working, and then you can deploy it to production and production will be exactly the same as your local. And then of course your local is production. And in this way, multiple people can work on the same database, making schema changes when necessary, a very good way to manage things. So you get the gist, right? It all happens in chronological order, V1, V2, V3, so on and so forth. So what happens when somebody tries to change an old migration? So let's go back and change V1. So this is the initialization one, right? So creating the table books, ISBN title, but I don't know, let's say the book also had a, let's say publish date. And let's call that a timestamp. Cool, okay, so it's, it's going to try and add a publish date to, to the table books. 
or is it? Let's run the application and see what we get. We have a massive stack trace. So let's go to the top of this and try and make sense of it. So it's saying here, migration checks are mismatch for migration version one. So that was what was applied to the database and this is what we have locally. So remember that checksum in the database, that thing that was uh, over here? Well, that is, that is a checksum of what was applied. And we can see here that we've changed it. So it's completely different at this point. So Flowaway is not going to apply it. And that right there is a great safety feature to make sure that old database migrations can't be changed after they've been applied because who would really know what to do with that? And there we go, how you would use Flyway with Spring Boot. Now, if you wanna learn more about Spring Boot and why wouldn't you, it's a super powerful tool, then be sure to check out our full Spring Boot tutorial right here taking you from all the theory, building your first application, right up to a finished REST API and deploying it to the cloud. See you over there.